There is a very ancient metaphor that the self is like a cup or chalice of light. You can choose to fill it with the muck and confusion of the lower worlds, or it can be filled with the brilliant light and pure spirit sound of Hure, God. This reminds me of an article I once wrote for Vardanus called quote, illuminating the consciousness by feeding the white wolf. And I'll share some of it. Quote, American Indian mythology speaks of two forces in the lower worlds, the white wolf and the dark wolf. The positive wolf represents the Varden, and the dark wolf represents the cow power. It is said that it is wise to increase the strength of the good wolf by feeding it, and wise to decrease the strength of the dark wolf by not feeding it. If we feed the dark wolf, it will grow bigger and stronger. Feeding the wolf has to do with our attention and is a matter of focus. If we focus on what we do not want, or if we focus on fearing him, hating him, or fighting him, the dark wolf grows stronger. Feeding thoughts of worry, fear, doubt, we are feeding the bad wolf. On the other hand, if we focus on what we want spiritually and summon a great confidence in the Varden, divine spirit, we focus on God, Hure, and the consciousness we seek, it's feeding the good wolf and making it bigger, stronger, and more powerful. It is like seeing your consciousness as a chalice. You can choose to fill it with the muck and confusion of the lower worlds, or fill it with the brilliant light and pure spirit sound of God. Each spiritual exercise, no matter how insignificant it seems, makes a big difference cumulatively. We can fill our consciousness or chalice with Varden white light and sound by chanting the zikar, high vibrational charged words of God, or by study of the Varden books, which are the words of the master, or filling our cup by feeling grateful and joy for spiritual gifts that have been showered on us from God. We can also fill our cup by doing spiritual exercises to touch the vast, pure spirit, heavenly realms, filling our cup by doing all actions in the name of God, filling our cup by practicing the presence of the master or masters of Varden, and filling our cup by doing all our moments that build right character or divine merit of increasing a greater focus, desire and love for Hure, God. The more we fill our consciousness up with the Varden, divine spirit, light and sound over a period of years, the more luminous, like a spark that becomes a flame, and a flame that becomes a bright fire, until the fire grows and builds and builds and becomes a bright white sun, a sphere of white brilliance lighting up the world, lighting up the whole universe with Hugh Ray's light and sound. I once had an out-of-body experience with a chalice of light and was told through knowing this to drink in a deeper love for God. So as you drink of it, the liquid light which is luminous and brilliant, flows through pure soul. One helpful technique to fill your chalice of light, which I did every morning um, over certain periods of time, is to visualize a chalice of light filled with a liquid light that represents the great love, a great love for God. Visualize drinking in this great love for God. Each spiritual exercise and moment to do soul projection, as well as the reading of 
the words of the Master and builds spiritual merit and proper character traits that are needed for self-realization. It is not unlike the individual that reaches self-realization. The light and sound about him, around him, is like that of many suns. We do spiritual exercises to visit heaven 30 minutes daily because God is here and now. Self-realization and God-realization is possible. You do not have to wait until the death of the physical body, but can have the realizations in this lifetime, now, while we're still living, because God is here and now. When I chanted the hue with great love, found myself in the pure white universe, the Anami. It was being shown that we can drink in this, we can visualize drinking in this liquid light of Holy Spirit and allowing it to lift us up into it. On the returning wave home to God, when we allow this great light of God to shine through us, to flow through us in the ways that God desires it, but too great a focus on filling our consciousness with worldly ways of seeking to see, fill the cup of consciousness with ways of belittling others or ourselves, to push the idea to focus on the imperfections human bodies. Humans are imperfect in the body and have flaws and make mistakes, but we seek to transcend bodies, astral, physical, and so forth, and find perfection in the God worlds or God awareness. Nothing in this world has little if any meaning or value if it is not of the hue God, this is the only thing of great value I possess. I've lost sometimes almost everything, but the only thing that has given my life true and greatest meaning and joy are my inner out-of-body experiences with Hure. We must have a spiritually aware respect and detached love for all other souls. And we must have a high level of respect for those with God realization. Varden Masters. Only a great fool attacks channels of God because it is a form of self destruction in various incarnations. If we fill our cup by giving our ears to negative people, we are feeding the dark wolf. Toxic people seek to destroy that which is spiritual. As Petrzask said, to the non-spiritual, the spiritual is hypocrisy, meaning that the love of God and spirituality sounds preposterous to their ears. An irrationalization of the mind can only be explained as hypocrisy and deceit. This is because they do not yet have the eyes to see, nor the ears to hear, and do not have the consciousness or the love of God to detect it or respect it. To them, spirituality and spiritual people are something to be attacked. And this greatly reminds me of a quote I read once from an insightful woman named Karen Young, who said, quote, you can be the most loving, hard-working, kind-hearted, and spiritual person, and toxic people will turn themselves inside out to convince you that you are a liar, that you are lazy, that you are no good, a criminal, and horrible person. If you have any human flaws or make any human mistakes, toxic people will celebrate and cheer. They desire to trick you and push you as hard as they can to make mistakes so that they can condemn you. 
because the suffering of others gives them pleasure. The gossiping and negative emotions about human personalities is their spirituality. Your consciousness is your home and toxic people will want to break in. They will want to break in and steal your spiritual life away. It's also like Paul G saw or said about Kali Yugas and toxic people, that toxic people or Cal channels will see in reverse. They see virtue as a vice and vice as a virtue. To such a person, one who loves God and one who loves spirituality and even God's name is unvirtuous. God's name brings pain to their ears. God's light is too bright and they hide in the darkness. It is very important to learn to follow pure knowingness from soul. It is the finer, higher form of guidance. This way we can more easily avoid spiritual traps such as avoid breaking the most basic spiritual laws of God and the universes, such as the law of love, the law of non-interference, meaning we do not interfere with another without their permission. And so I'd like to say that although I certainly don't appreciate the psychic attacks of witchcraft that have come to us from the Ek leaders and so forth, the truth is, is that I have forgiven Ekankar, but I don't condone the behavior of harming people with the psychic force. I don't support hating Ekankar or supporting Ekankar. I am on what's called the middle path, being neither for nor against. Sri Paul Twitchell has said over and over in his works, books, discourses, that the Varden student must never dabble in the occult and must never do witchcraft, nor abuse out-of-body travel. It is a violation of spiritual law. Paul was speaking, but some of his students were not listening. The use and abuse of white and black magic is feeding the dark wolf. The notion that Vardenkar is working with Ekankar or the pawn of Ekankar is entirely false. Ekankar is an entirely different group. As I said a moment ago, Vardenkar does not seek to support Ekankar, nor does it seek to bash Ekankar. It is neither for nor against, meaning it is the middle path, as said before. Feeding the white wolf is being more acutely sensitive to the Varden, the guidance of the Varden, Holy Spirit. When I touched the Living Varden Master's book, I immediately experienced an illumination and flash of the pure, positive God worlds. It contained a vibration, a consciousness, each word, the God wisdom or truth. Cal channels or toxic people spread misinformation and give us half truths instead of Hure, God's truth. There was one man who spoke with me and I wanted to respect his psychic space and not violate the law of non-interference, so I didn't share anything about my spirituality with him. But he tried to convince me that the name of God, Hugh, is negative. One is feeding the negative wolf or being toxic the name of God is painful to such a person's ears. The light of God is painful to their eyes. The moment this man said the word Hugh, I immediately saw in the inner worlds with great clarity that he was not speaking to me from love, but speaking to me from malevolence, revenge, and a desire to harm myself and those I love. He was hiding his anger, and so I immediately stumbled about awkwardly and made some excuse to hang up the phone. This man made up some lies to trick me to speak with him on the telephone, 
And then he tricked me a second time by asking me to repeat some words that he said. Cal channels are clever. They are experts at distorting reality and the truth. They're experts at attacking spiritual people, people, and channels of God. They are experts at taking what you say and bending what you say, twisting it around to promote their dark ideas. When we give our ears to toxic people, we are feeding the bad wolf. When we feed the white wolf and give our audience and attention to it, it does not abuse our love, but spiritually lifts us up higher and higher and higher planes and towards God. It's like allowing ourselves to be magnetized to Holy Spirit. Masters are not perfect in the human body, so various masters like Petar Zask, Paul Twitchell, I am not perfect in the human body, nor is Nidaza perfect in the human body. Masters get sick, masters encounter difficulties, but the negative power seeks perfection of the astral body and physical bodies. It is a moralistic power that looks at everything from the eyes of human consciousness. People are taught to be taught the false idea of the cow power that in order to be spiritual, one has to be like Jesus walking on water. They shouldn't have any human attributes. They shouldn't eat. They shouldn't get sick. They shouldn't have human interests. This idea of bodily perfection is from the cow power to make the student believe because his body is imperfect or lower bodies are imperfect and that he makes mistakes, that he will never be good enough or perfect enough to reach self and God realization. This is a trap to make us feel that these higher states of consciousness are never possible and to trap us in the lower world matrix. When really the way to free soul is to learn to leave the body and choose to travel and dwell in the worlds beyond time and space. Contrary to popular opinion, the higher one's state of consciousness and usefulness to God, the more one will be attacked by the cow and its children. If we assume the cow power will offer us happy congratulations and bake us a batch of brownies <laughs> for wanting to break out of the phys its physical and astral domains, we are being, well, naive. The negative power, or <laughs> the cow, less attacks those that want to stay in its matrix. Why would it care to attack those that don't really threaten it? Paul G was poisoned, and Alan G, with great love for the Hure, took on certain sufferings to help souls according to the Hure's desires. He incarnated in this dark world and has been attacked with the cow's attacks because the cow often attacks with greatest fury those who are true channels of God, but few understand this. People who are trapped in the anger band will seek to try and drag us into their dark world. They want to suck us in like a black hole, to dwell on beaming, like Star Trek, negative thought forms and doubts into the mind. You can ask for the master's help and chant the zikar and do all actions for God. And I should add that, to quote Petr Zask from the Tiger's Fang, he said, wise words, which is, quote, how can you tell when the cow power is greater in one man than another? You may say to him, quote, bless you, and he will try and use the blessing as a stick to beat you. If you say to him, this is the truth, he will start working his mind at once to prove it is not so. If you say, quote, love your enemies, he will go to work to make some enemies, including you, in order to have someone to love. Show him money, and he begins to think how to get that money from you. 
Make peace in your household, and he will proceed to try and break it up. He thinks vice is a virtue, and virtue is a vice. Paul G. proceeds to explain that there are thousands of impulses that are sent to the individual to get him into wrong thinking and wrong action. But he adds that, quote, persistence in thinking the right way about God will halt all such impulses, and that each step on the ladder upward man takes, he must choose all over again which side of the ladder he will climb. Will he take the virtuous side or the non-virtuous side? Page 157, Tiger's Fang, Paul Twitchell. Each little spiritual thought and action builds spiritual merit and proper character traits needed for self-realization and beyond. It is a form of guidance to say to do not feed the negative wolf that feeds off of the energies of others by belittling human personalities instead of focusing on God. It is a form of atheism that pretends to be spirituality. To the negative wolf or the non-spiritual or toxic person, the spiritual is hypocrisy, as Petar says. Instead, we can fill our chalice with God. Even something as simple as reading a Varden book in the physical body or soul body in the inner temple for 10 minutes every single day and never skipping a day, we can eventually notice a huge change in our consciousness. Like a tiny spark of light that in time becomes like a huge, brilliant sphere, like a sun, that God's light flows through these universes. May the blessings be 